seen oh um movies actually i'm not the biggest movie buff in the world but i've been watching a lot more in the last couple of days just because i want to get i want to end the year um i want to i want to basically end this year drowning myself or covering myself in every kind of a you know creative expression that exists out there i'm just head going in deep watching documentaries listening to mixes recording stuff writing stuff creating things i just want to end this year big i want to do as much as i can so i can feed into and kind of overflow into the new year so i've been watching loads of movies taking notes um, regurgitating that stuff writing my own stuff just you know just trying to be as creative as i can possibly can and one way that i did it was going through a list of movies i've always kind of saved in my bookmarks i've never kind of gotten um I've never got around to kind of watching. And one of those movies is Anna. Um, Anna is an action movie, basically in the same way that you were, um, that you would, uh, I would describe it as, what's that one with them? Um, where his daughter always goes missing. Liam Neeson for movie. What's that movie called? Uh, Liam Neeson movies. What's that thing called? What's it called? Taken. Yeah, so Anna is in the same form as Taken. Um, the idea is you got this one protagonist, which is this model, who who who's, is a model undercover as a KGB agent, who kind of goes around assassinating the targets, and then through that story, she kind of reaches a boiling point, a crossroads. She has to decide whether or not she wants to live in this continuing kind of prison, uh, being a KGB um, assassin where she can't leave, or she wants to live in a prison as being a model, you know, where you're constrained to what's just in front of the lens. So it's this kind of existential story where she kind of discovers herself through the process of killing loads of people. Very interesting and very bizarre. But once you read into the story a little bit deeper, you understand that the actual main um, actor of this movie, um, Anna, is actually a former model herself, a professional, you know, legit runway model called Sasha Lush, who was, I think, discovered by the director in order to play this role. And now she's um, kind of got this goal in her head that she actually wants to win an Oscar, um, which is, you know, surprising when you see a performance in Anna. It's not the strongest performance in the world, but still there's some kind of scope in there. There's some, um, you can see some talent, some range in her. So it's just cool to see somebody doing a role like Anna for the first time, especially being a former model and straight away coming in it with some, you know, heady goals. Like she wants to win an Oscar. Whether she just, she wins it anyway, isn't really the point. The point is she's having, she's come from one arena in fashion and completely pivoted into this, you know, acting world that is, you know, cutthroat. There's no favors there. For the most part, acting is probably worse than probably modern out modeling. I'd say for the most part, if you're a model and you've got the swag and you generally have the look, you can book most of the jobs, but in acting, it doesn't really matter that you're the best actor. Um, sometimes movies just don't work out due to other external factors, whether it's a production company, whether it's the agent owes somebody a favor so they get someone else a role instead of you, even though you, re you read really well and you auditioned really well. So it's other things that play that would result in you get, not getting a job. And I would imagine too, there is probably a plethora of attractive blonde girls that work in Hollywood that don't get any jobs because, you know, maybe nowadays with the whole... Um, light being shone on probably representing more uh diverse and maybe marginalized uh communities maybe being a white blonde girl isn't necessarily the best look that you want nowadays so it's a bit diff it must be quite tricky for her but i still commend her courage and her forthrightness and kind of going for it and this short little interview on vulture speaks upon what i'm speaking about now the I'll quickly read it to you now. The, the article is titled Sasha Lush is, is a movie star now and she's given herself five years to get an Oscar. So incredible to see. And this is a scene from one of the first sort of um, action clips or sort of like action sequences that you'll see in the movie. Anna. And I recommend you check it out. If you're a fan of Taken, don't expect any like highbrow Michael Scorsese sort of like, you know, type storytelling. But if you like action and you like really cool combat scenes, I really recommend you check it out. I think she even trained Muay Thai and, and MMA for this as well. So um, I really commend her from again just being a, your average run of the day model if you've ever seen a model run you'll know that this is a big deal models run really horrible so the fact that she's able to kind of you know um, beat people up in this movie and make it look convincing is really good so I really can check it out so the the title of Argos is the following um, Sasha Lush is virtually is in virtually every scene in Anna the R-rated um, Locke Benson action flick about a supermodel turned super assassin that finally opens after a series of delays related to sexual assault allegations made against his director. This month, the movie charts uh, the titular characters rise from the Russian street urchin to professional killer, the kind who can take down a bear-sized mobster with a fork to the neck or disembowel four assailants using um, dinner plates. Luss's favorite scenes occur when Anna, in a fit of peak 
pistol whips, an arrogant fashion photographer with nothing but his own camera, snapping photos of the hood could show humiliation as it happens. Models are just going, are going to love me for this, she says. Over the past decade, Russian-born Lush has become one of the most sought-after models in the fashion industry. But uh, the catwalk has never really been an end goal. The Vogue covers girl, that's amazing. She was even a Vogue cover girl, amazing. Turned 27 last week. I'm on this 27, like 35 in model years because they, whenever they say ages like that, I always get the feeling that they're kind of subliminally saying that she's too old to model, which is really bizarre, isn't it? Um, spent her birthday at the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Began her career as a professional stage performer as early as, as an age of eight. She was taking parts in plays like Jonathan Livingston Seagull. She played an abortion angel in the Moscow production. Living in New York for the past several weeks, she's continued to study acting with the acclaimed drama coach Susan Batson, the one Nicole Kidman and Tom Cruise acknowledging respective awards acceptance speeches. The world simply wasn't made aware of her talents until a chance scouting by a controversial French filmmaker, which is the part of the reason why I guess Anna didn't get the um, press that it should have got because the directors got embroiled in a bit of, in some sexual sexual assault allegations, which is always you know disappointing for the people that are acting in the movie, um, especially nowadays with you know a lot of the kind of attention being pointed towards the, the sorry the victims and you know you have to believe all victims so a lot of that kind of initial steam initially goes wears off on the director they have to answer a lot of questions and usually the production company doesn't want to put them in front of the cameras or to hurt the movie's chances in the box office but for the most part there's so much content out there that you really have to get that person who directs it or who stars in it to kind of be front and center that's why even even nowadays with the you know with social media being what it is you're still seeing people like kevin hart and the rock you know hitting every single market doing every single interview under the sun to kind of gain exposure for their movie because you know without doing those kind of circuits no one's really going to care or bother to watch a movie and again i stumbled upon anna because i happened to be watching a movie in the cinema it was one of the trailers i played beforehand and i'm also one of those geeks that will write shit, stuff down and then go and google it later some people might just check it and say oh my god that looks like a cool movie they'll they'll try and remember it and then obviously once you leave the cinema you completely forget it on your way to go get, grab a burger so I really feel sad for in that regard, isn't it? Um, that she kind of got cast in the movie by a guy that obviously saw her out, that wanted to give her a chance, but now he's also embroiled in this sort of like sexual assault scandal stuff. Um, Anna director Benson is known for um, habitually stocking his thrillers with visually gonzo sci-fi, gonzo sci-fi films with models. Just as he was casting the Valerian in a city of thousand planets, he came across Lush's image in a magazine and reached out to her modeling and she's amazing, right? So that's the reason she's actually doing it in real life. The two met the day after the director's father died and Lust says their conversation inevitably got heavy about family's relationships months later they met again in Paris for a four hour audition during which um, Lush um, sang a cappella and spoke in an alien language of her own creation wow he tortured me she says he got the job she got the job in her debut role Princess Lilo Mania in the 20th century planet Mule a trippy looking humanoid with alabaster skin curler blue eyes and a monk bald pate whose ultimate untimely death at the hands of the marauding aliens sets the movie's plot in motion. Um, over the course of seven days at New Zealand's renowned special effects company, Mueta Workshop, the actress says she got to know Benson. It was it was me, Luck, and his wife was a producer on the set. Lush recalls during a recent visit to Los Angeles in fluent Russian accent and English, Luck was always asking questions. He knew why I was, that I was frustrated with modeling. By that moment, it was not interesting anymore. She was like, he was so he was like is acting something you're serious about and i was like yeah very much and he was like how do you see your life in five years in five years she said i'm going to have an oscar he was like you don't sound like a girl who was shot a little scene in a big movie but let's see if what can help you so that's amazing to see in it like i would imagine as well being that's that that's a problem i guess with modeling in it as with most niche um industries the come up is probably quite interesting and a little bit difficult and requires you to go to the gym work out you know put your name out there go to random castings and hustle 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 but i guess once you reach the pinnacle you start doing the vogue covers and stuff that's basically the apex of the mountain there's not there's not much room to go from there right and as the years go by your stock seems to like dwindle especially if you're not some of the elite you know five to ten models who are still working in the older age for the most part so you're constantly having to battle with the younger kids in an industry that you probably don't really care about but i guess the good thing about modeling is that i've heard that a lot of the women, especially nowadays, or um, you know, for the for the beginning of time, basically, women earn a disproportionate amount more modeling than than men do. So if men get paid fifty thousand, a woman's going to get paid half a mil for that same um, shoot, which you know they're well deserving of getting. So 
there is this idea that you can earn a big lick you can make a lot of money and obviously if you don't have any you don't have any vices and you're a fairly stable person and you got your head screwed on right you can go in there earn a lot of money save it and then go and pursue your other dreams but the only issue i'd see with modeling in that regard is that it steals your youth and it steals the time that you kind of have to kind of mess around and kind of figure stuff out so by the time you kind of pop out the other side imagine if you get into modeling when you're 21 by the time you pop out the other side and you're at 27 28 you've essentially wasted a lot of the time that you would have been figuring life out in that middle bit so now you're having to figure life out just before you turn 30 and if there's anything more scary than figuring life out before turning 30 it's trying to figure it out when you're 28 and you're a former model and you don't have any life experiences you're going to come out of it f like not like fully unequipped right you've been babied for the most of your life by your agency they basically book all your jobs for you they sort out your accommodations sort out your travel um you have a very insular or kind of uh yeah insular kind of friendship group that don't really partake in the real world you are smoozing and uh, you know with uh, with the higher ups of society and to suddenly be spat out the other side now you have to kind of fend for yourself in the outside world must be a real trip must be a real trip especially nowadays again like i'm saying with you know there's so much competition coming at you when you're modeling right from this get some, some random girl in some nowhere town on instagram to this established person who's now kind of rejigging herself and placing herself in a more of a younger space i.e naomi campbell right you're competing with naomi campbell who's now figured out how to do youtube and she's absolutely smashing it and you also fix competing with the girl on instagram so i really commend this girl for going this direction it's really cool to see and again it's it's also nice that you have somebody that's able to kind of guide you down this process in this act in this director uh luc besson Meanwhile, um, Lus not only continued to work on her acting, but endeavoured to write her own screenplays too, which is always a thing you have to do, I think. I think it's the same. I'm even seeing it with, with my DJing work. As as great as I'm as great as I'm doing with the DJ gigs at the moment, I've got you know gigs coming out of my ass. I'm being approached by people to go and play places, which is amazing. You still have to be a triple threat. You have to be able or a double threat. You have to be able to DJ and you have to be able to produce. It's just one of those things. You have to be able and, it, and maybe even be good at social media. That might be the triple threat. And I guess when you're acting, it's the same thing. And maybe just to kind of advance your acting, you have to maybe do things that you're not good at. That's where the ten thousand hours kind of gets thrown out the window. What actually separates the good to the great? Is that they have the they have a they have a basically a coach right if you're a tennis star and you're roger federer you might not practice as much as you know some guy in the park but what you have the advantage of is a is a basically a coach who's able to analyze your footage or just see you in real life and tell you to kind of bring your elbow down a little bit those little tweaks is what's going to make you jump up several notches than the regular guy playing in the park and i guess maybe screen writing a screenplay is the same thing for an actor like the idea that you're able to kind of understand that side of movie making would then inevitably help you in front of the screen i would imagine in front of the camera i would imagine so i don't know i've never really done acting in that regard so i don't know if that's true but hopefully that is true which is what compelled her to reach out to Besson, Besson a few months after the Valerian production wrapped up to request some of his shooting scripts. He knew what I, that I'm writing a lot and asked him, may I please have a few screenplays like my maybe the fifth element or something so I could just see how you write. That's when he sent me Anna. I was like, wow, I never heard of it. And he said, yeah, because it's new. Then he's like, would you want to be the role of Anna? The upshot, the kind of shoot 'em up Cinderella story that fits into the Atomic Blade, Red Sparrow, and Salt family of espionage tales. Oh, yeah, Salt was another good one as well that I quite enjoyed. Despite an almost total absence of acting bona fides, Lust inhibits a starring role in a 30 million Anna, holding her own in the high octane, ass kicking scenes, as well as in the dialogue heavy sequences of Oscar winner Helen Mirren, who portrays Anna's techno bullshit KB, KGB overseer. Oh, it's Helen Mirren. Okay, cool. No wonder she's so good. To, to physically prepare for to play a character who's lethal in jiu-jitsu grappling and muay thai kickboxing anna trained um with the film's choreographer up to six hours a day five times a week for two months then she continued a grueling regime throughout principal photography i knew they were going to do a lot of fighting scenes i'm not a very sporty person i have a dancing background which i thought would help it didn't <laughs> Lust says physically it was hard it was long it was exhausting a lot of people ask me who got beaten up the most and i'm like me like that's but it's amazing if you watch actually the action scenes from the movie she's very convincing like you couldn't be able to you wouldn't tell that she's not a very sporty person she definitely uh, is able to kind of pull it off really well um it's the kind of star making performance that should be familiar to besson's com to, uh, com completist he's long introduced audiences to unknown actresses future resident advisor frigid resident um evil franchise face mila jo jovich in the fifth element uh 13 year old natalie portman in the professional and french superstar uh and balois 
in the 1990 La Femme, Nikita, the British supermodel Cara Delevingne, had only appeared in Suicide Squad before. She had Lion Besson's Valerian. Scarlett Johansson, who plays the telepathic telekinesian mental time traveller in previous to pain in Besson's 460M ghost million film Lucy, was already quite famous by the time Besson cast her. No word yet whether she'll appear in the movie's rumoured sequel. Okay, that's great to see. The sequel coming up too, but... Definitely recommend you check it out. So one of the, it's a great movie. I really enjoyed it. High octane drama, loads of kick ass action scenes, and again, a really cool way for an actress or a former model to kind of segue into acting, which is you know very difficult profession. But again, more power to her. She has a goal of getting an Oscar in five years, and who's to say it won't happen? Credit credit 